Bicycles were invented in the early 1800s. They have changed quite a bit since then. There used to be a seat with two wheels attached that you would push off from the ground to generate forward momentum. Electric bikes are just like regular bicycles, but equipped with motors, batteries, and a few other electronic components to power them. This is slowly becoming the new way of commuting. Are you wondering that, other than prefacing it with the word electric, how are e-bikes different from a regular bicycle? You might not be able to find a part unless you look at them, but the difference is pretty evident when you ride one. An electric bike has equivalent parts that you can find in any garage. Two wheels, pedals, chains, and sometimes you would also get it fitted with derailers or what we call in India as gears. The gears that convert power into the forward momentum, that is what they are used it for. E-bikes also use lightweight motors and a rechargeable battery to augment the power you're generating by pedaling. It does not remove the necessity for the pedals, otherwise it will just make it as a scooter, right? But instead, an e-bike makes it easier for you to travel longer distances or traverse steep slopes with minimal effort. When we talk about an EV ecosystem in any country, there are six major components that we have to deal with. By that, I mean the first one being the manufacturing of e-vehicles, the infrastructure to support the commute, the charging infrastructure with point-to-point -point accessibility, batteries with affordable rates, clean energy to power these vehicles, and finally, the government's directives towards the manufacturing and importing companies as well as friendlier policies for the end consumers. When all of these six components come together, the entire ecosystem of eco-friendly commute is built. But wait, there is one more most important seventh element to the entire ecosystem which completes it as a circle. The seventh parameter is actually adoption of an EV in a common person's life. I have always wanted to create a simple yet powerful impact that would make a world a better place to live, to breathe, and to experience all the joys of life. The needs of the industry and the population started becoming more and more niche. One had to be increasingly innovative and realistic at the same time. Joining a mobility startup, which was into rentals of ice engines, of mopeds and bikes across eight cities of India, got me closer to understanding the mobility of India. This is when I got an opportunity to travel the entire world and understand different ways of commute, infrastructure, and read them closely for how an EV ecosystem works. I was inspired by European countries where most users e use e-bikes for their day-to-day -day commute, despite public transport being extremely, I would say, structured and concrete in Europe. E-bikes happen to be the first choice when it comes to private modes of transport owning them and with indisputable benefits. I want to build a similar ecosystem for my beloved country, India. Four years of extreme research, supply chain functioning, closely monitoring the commute segment for a country of 138 crore population and a grid to change the way today's mobility works with investment in increasing fuel prices. And this is how my startup eMotorad was born. Now, how exactly do these e-bikes solve the issue? E-bikes are designed to be very easy to operate. As a rider, you have three modes of operations available to you. The first is pedal only. At any time, you can pedal an electric bicycle just as you would with a regular one. There is no extra resistance created by the motor, so it will feel exactly like a regular bicycle would. The next mode is pedal assist, sometimes called an electric assist. In this mode, you can be able to take the advantage of combined human plus electric power. Once you turn on the mode via the on-off button of the handlebars, the motor will gently provide the electric power as you pedal. You can still, you can still switch gears as the terrain changes to take advantage of more torque or faster speed. It is an amazing feeling to use the pedal assist mode as it makes cycling effortless, flattens out on the hills and frees you to just enjoy yourself and the scenery. And the third mode is electric only. This mode of operation allows you to sit back and take a break. As you let the motor do the work by just throttling, 
The e-bike can go up to 45 kilometers on a single charge at a maximum speed of 25 kilometers per hour, which also means that the rider does not require a driver's license. So in conclusion, e-bikes can be used to cover longer distances within a matter of minutes, and it can also be pedaled if all hell breaks loose and the battery drains. I've been asked multiple times about the market of e-bikes and how they can coexist with the available modes of transport. Well, e-bikes are never sort of sought to compete with the uh, car and scooter market as of today. And there are several factors to be, to be considered in this. If you see, cars in the country aren't just means of transport. They serve more as a sign of prestige, a family asset. Hence, the competition space becomes considerably segmented here. E-bikes, however, have the potential of acting as a stepping mobility space between cycles and scooters. Owning to their huge monetary difference, they complement these two markets perfectly and serve their respective needs. Commuting to workplaces contributes significantly to moving around the city and that is enough of a need to get a separate solution. Now, riding an electric bike is actually a testament of how much you care about your environment, your own body, and aside from the numerous benefits that the cycle can provide, we have been extremely touched by the user's feedback and testimonials. Ranging from zealous teenagers to enthusiastic senior citizens, the e-bikes prove to be an asset to all. In the future, these e-bikes could even respond to the rider's heart rate, offering more or less resistance depending upon how your heart is pumping as you pedal. It is predicted that electric bike sales will likely continue to grow more. People look for alternate usage. Gasoline powered vehicles are going down for their morning commute. As technology continues to evolve, we may even see more applications of these bikes, from off-roading to grocery shopping and everything in between. If you're looking for the transportation alternative, that will shrink your carbon footprint and still provide a great workout. Consider investing in an e-bike and joining the wave of the future. Welcome to the world of electric. Welcome to the world of next generation mobility. Jai Hind.